blessings to you. I'm Ruben Abante. Welcome to the pulpit. Let me turn you over now to the sanctuary of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And may you be blessed with the preaching of the Word of God. Peter chapter 1 verses 13 down to verse 16 <clears throat> and those of you who watch over television and maybe our webcast on the gctv.asia or even facebook live tell us 
that you're blessed. Okay? Write us a note. Send us something so we may know how effective this uh, broadcast or television uh, program comes to you and how the Word of God blesses you. At kayo din naman, mga naririto. Okay? Baka sabi niyo eh, mabuti pa yung nasa television, binabati ni Pastor. Kaya binabati ko kayo lahat. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 13 down to verse 16. May we all read, everyone in this auditorium, no, meron dyan, yung verses up on our screen. So everybody, please read along. Everybody, go. Wherefore, geared up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because as it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, as we go to your word, open our hearts, open our minds. And as I speak, Heavenly Father, that this message not just simply come as a talk, but dear God, that we may know that this is a message off from your word, and that we may take it as your will, as your word, and have a response, dear God, as your people. Thank you that we can come together as Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church, along with the rest of those who join us, and maybe they're here in this place as first time as guests and maybe they're on board via television or our webcast or social media. But I pray, Heavenly Father, that you just bless this giving of your word for your glory and honor and for your pleasing. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may please be seated. God is good. You know, in our ng choir. Ano ang basihan ng pagiging mabuti ng Diyos. Well, firstly, sapagkat siya ay mismong mabuti. Okay? Ang kanyang persona, ang buong kabutihan ay nasa kanya. Minsan, tayo mga tao, tinuturin lang natin na ang kapwa natin ay mabuti sapagkat nakikinabang tayo sa kanila. Tama? For us, we say people are good simply because we gain from their goodness. If we don't gain materially, if we don't gain physically, then we don't consider them to be good. But that is not so with God. Are we listening? Sometimes God allows for some things that we don't understand, hard to accept, but sometimes God allows them that we, you know, to, to come our way. But He is nevertheless good because He indeed is good. It is in His attribute to be good. I said a while ago, what's the basis for God's goodness? This is. Because we do not know God. However, this world can speak of the greatness of a creator. However, that the sounds would say the heavens declare the glory of God. And you know, if you look at the whole creation, it just simply gives you a great realization that all this thing cannot come and exist just by themselves. There's a great creator. Amen. But then... We understand God to be good and gracious and love and truth because of this word. Amen. And what does this word tell of God? We go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, in our text, I referred to our text in verses 13 down to verse 16. Okay? You remember our text. We read... 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning from verse 13. And Peter says there, Wherefore, wherefore, 
Kung baga sa Tagalog, sa makatuwid. Tama ba? And when that word exists, ibig sabihin may naunang discussion. Tama ba? Okay? Pag nakita natin yung mga sinasabing therefore or wherefore, ibig sabihin there are some presentations done preceding. So, so we may better understand why Peter says wherefore, then we go to verse 3. Amen. And appreciate the whole of what Peter says in this chapter of 1 Peter chapter 1. And beginning from verse 3 on down to verse 12, Peter says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what a blessed God is He. Amen. He is worthy of all honor. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all glory. Okay? He is worthy to be blessed. He is worthy for us to say, Blessed be God. You see, that's worship. Amen? That is worship. When we come to God and we come together as His people and we say, Blessed be God because He is worthy of such praise. Why is He worthy? What has He done? Look at the next words. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. My God is worthy to be honored. God is worthy to be praised. He is worthy of all the glory, of all the praises. Why? Because He is abundant in mercy. Amen? All things we receive according to His mercy and grace. Why? Even when we are not worthy. And then, you know, He has begotten us. Everybody who receives Christ as Savior and Lord, hey, you know what the word says? Is born into his family. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. And everybody who trusts Christ is a child of God. I am. I may not look, I may not, I may not look good. We may not, but hey, Everybody, ang lahat ng tumanggap at sumampalataya kay Kristo ay binigyan ng karapatan at pribilehiyong tawaging mga anak ng Diyos. Amen. Who hath begotten us unto a lively hope. And in Christ, we have a lively hope. We have a living hope. Pag-asa na buhay, hindi po patay. Ayaw natin ang umasa sa pag-asa na patay. Amen. At ang ating pag-asa ay buhay sapagkat si Kristo ay buhay. Hindi na siya patay. Nung siya ay bumangon sa mga patay, minsan lang nangyari yan. At magpakailanman, siya ay buhay. Kaya ang ating pag-asa ay buhay. Okay. At hindi lang yan. Ano po? Doon sa verse 4, To an inheritance incorruptible and defiled and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. You know what? I am glad to say this and I am so glad I can have this claim according to God's word. I have heaven as my inheritance. Oh yes. Dahil sa aking pagtitiwala at pananampalataya at lahat ng may pagsampalataya kay Kristo ay hindi lang ipinanganak sa pamilya ng Diyos ngunit tayo ay may anong tawag sa inheritance sa Tagalog? Pamana. Hindi ba? Mana. Okay? Abay, mga kapatid, siguro sa mundong ito, mahirap tayo. But you know what? Milyonaryo kaya ako. Oh, hindi lang dito, no? Pero, I am not that liquid here. But hey, ang sabi ng banalang kusulatan, mayroong mansion. Inaawit natin, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Ang sabi dito, to an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. 
hey, I have that inheritance. You have it too, if you're saved. Nakikinig ba kayo? Oh, yes. Kaya I'm looking forward. No, I'm looking forward to heaven. Yes, I'm looking forward to glory. At kung ikay tunay na may Kristo sa iyong puso, abay hindi ka nagdududa na meron kang inheritance. Sapagkat yan ang sabi ng Bible. Oh yes, at anong katangian ng ating inheritance? Incorruptible. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Ha? Walang bahid ng karumhan. Abay dito, maganda yung bahay mo. Pag dumating ang tag-ulan, may tulo. Yan, yan. Tag umamar ka sa kisa, may hindi ba? Oo. Okay? Tapos kahit hindi, pag lalo na, pag hindi mo tinirahan ng bahay, nasisira. Correct. Okay? Ano pa? Undefiled. Walang bahid ng anumang karumhan and everything. Walang blemish. Undefiled. At isa pa, hindi nag-fade. Merong brand na sasabi, faded glory. Ang glory ng aking inheritance, hindi nag-fade. Okay? Yung mga pantalon ngayon, distressed. Faded. Gustong gusto ng tao, no? bakit kaya yun? Ano? My inheritance fades not away. At isa pa ito, reserved in heaven for you. Silyado para sa lahat ng mana ng palataya. Walang agawan. Oo. Mga kapatid, hindi po ako border sa langit. I have my inheritance. So with you today. Do you have such? I pray today that you can also have that claim. And all because of the goodness of God. Kaya karapat dapat siya ng lahat ng ating pagpapuri and blessing and honor and praise. And verse 6, ang sabi, and verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith. You see, tayo is under God's keeping. Did you know that? Abay, kung hindi sa Panginoon, eh, nalaglag na tayo. Mabuti na lang ang ating relationship with the Lord. Our relationship is not based on how we hold on God, but on how He holds us. One song says, He, he holds my hand. He holds my hand. You know, sabi ng Panginoon eh, uh, my father and I are one and no man can take us and pluck us out from their hands. Amen? Solid. Kept. Secure in His love. Kaya naniniwala tayo sa security ng mga mana ng palataya. Okay? Hindi tayo nakakahulagpos sapagkat hindi tayo makakakawala sa kanyang pag-ibig. Kung hindi mo pa alam yan, basahin mo ang Romans chapter 8. Lalo na yung dulo. No, no, we cannot separate from the love of God. Nothing in this world can ever separate us from His love. Look at verse 6. Ang sabi, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness. Oh, we may go through some sufferings and pain in this life, but hey, they are just for a moment. Ang sabi dito, just for a Season. Are you listening? For a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. But hey, even as we go through such, ang sabi dito, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Anong dinaaralan na natin ngayon? Ano ang mga pasakit dahil sa ating pananampalataya? Hindi ito, mga kapatid, yung mga katulad ng nagsasuffer tayo dahil sa sarili nating kagagawan. Okay? Kung sarili nating kagagawan, eh tayo yun. Tama? Natututo tayo dyan. Correct. Pero kung tayo yung nagsasuffer dahil sa pagsunod natin sa salita ng Diyos, Dahil sa ating pananampalataya. Amen? Kahit i-bash ka. No? Kahit i-discriminate ka. But hey, those trials. Those trials. Anong gagawin? Sabi rito, no? Ang sabi dito, everything will be found to the praise and honor. Ang sabi rito. 
And then ang sabi, Having not seen, ye love in whom though now ye see him not, ye believing, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Alam niyo ba, naniniwala ako na ang tunay naman na nampalataya ay resilient sa lahat ng bagay. Anong ibig sabihin ng resilient? Ha? Yung hindi maupos-upos sa kagalakan. Right? Hindi maupos-upos ang patience niya. Hindi maubos-ubos. Nakakita na ba kayo ng bola ng basketball na pilit nilulubog sa swimming pool? Ha? Minsan, eto summer ngayon, mamamasyal na naman, mag, anong tawag dyan? Mag-outing na naman. Ang marami. Pagkatapos, maglalaro sa swimming pool, daladala yung mga bola, pilit ilulubog. Pero ano mangyayari? Lulutang at lulutang, hindi ba? Amen? Ganun dapat ang kagalakan ng mananampalataya. Kahit na pilit ilubog ng mundo. Okay? Pilit ilubog ng mga pasakit at pangyayari. Okay? Subalit, ang kagalakan sa ating puso, ang kapayapaan kay Kristo Yesus ay nananatili. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give. Okay? Kaya, dapat meron tayong kagalakan. Now, look at all this. Ito ay ininumerate muna ni Peter. Ang lahat ng mula sa kalooban, sa, ka, sa, ka, sa, sa biyaya, at sa magandang kalooban ng Diyos, ibinuhos niya muna sa mga naunang verses. Do you observe that? Diniscribe niya muna. Peter described all of these things, all the heavenly blessings that we have in Jesus Christ because of the Father's love, because of His grace. Amen? Malungkot yata kayo. Kita niyo mga itsura ninyo. Come on, nagagalak ba kayo ngayon? Ha? Pastor, kaya nga po eh. Alam niyo, pag napunta kayo sa lighthouse, ang gusto ko ay alalahanin natin ang kabutihan at kalooban at kagalakan sa Panginoon. Amen. Hindi naman natin pwedeng kalimutan, ano? Sabi ng mga iba, wag niyo isipin yung mga problema niyo. Hindi. Okay lang na isipin niyo. Pero mas isipin natin yung kagalakan kay Kristo. Amen. Mas i-focus natin sapagkat alam niyo, hindi naman balanse yon. The glory and even the glory which shall be revealed in us far outweighs anything that we have here on earth. Okay? Mas mabigat. Mas mabigat ang kaluwalhatian na mayroon tayo sa Kanya. Okay, ngayon. In verse 13 now, ang sabi ni Peter, Wherefore, after enumerating all that come to us because of the goodness of God, Peter says, wherefore? Wherefore? Alam niyo kung bakit? Sapagkat tayo lahat ay dapat may responde sa magandang kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Tama ba? Alam niyo minsan tayo mga tao, gagawa tayo ng isang mabuting bagay sa kapwa. Anong sukli sa atin? Anong sukli? Wala lang. Tama. Oo. Anong pakiramdam ninyo kapag nagpakita ka ng kabutihan, kapag nagpakita ka ng, well, magandang kalooban sa kapwa mo, pero wala lang? Wala din. <laughs> Di ba? Kaya maraming mga mana ng palataya ang buhay nila, wala lang. Wala lang. Walang impact. Walang dating. Come on, come on. Listen now very closely. Listen now. Can we just undermine? Can we just set aside all these things? O oh, pero, pupunta sa mga services, hihingi ng blessing sa Panginoon. Come on now. How many of you would want to be blessed? Sabi ko nang isang araw, alam mo ko ano ko ako ang Diyos, pagod na ako sa kahihingi ng mga tao. Napapagod ako. Di ba? Kakain ka. O sige, manalangin mo tayo, kakain tayo. Panginoon, bless this food. Inutusan mo ang Panginoon, bless this food para, di ba? Lahat na lang inuutos natin sa Panginoon. Bless me. Bless my business. Bless my family. Amen? Eh yung bless ng Panginoon, meron ba siya? 
hindi na pasalamat na ako. Kailangan pa ba ng iba? Come on. Kung ang papasalamat natin ay lip service, would that count? Maraming pagpapasalamat, marami ang praises, marami ang glory, marami ang praise the Lord, marami ang praise and worship, but they all remain to be simply lip service. What do I mean by that? Hanggang dito lang. Correct. Oh, pastor, na-atake mo na naman kami. Oh, pero teka muna. We are reading this. Wherefore? You know what? We need to have this wherefore in our lives too. Matapos nating makita ang salita ng Diyos, matapos nating malaman kung anong ginawa niya, matapos nating makita ang lahat ng kanyang goodness and grace and love and everything and mercy to our lives, what of it? What of it? Di ba? Anong tawag niyo sa tao na walang pagkilala sa kabutihan? Anong tawag natin doon? E di ingrato, right? Unthankful. Oh yes, but you know what? We can do even more just than just lip service to God. I believe that. And we come together and we listen to this preaching, we get to this word, we read the word of God, so we may know how to better respond to the goodness of God. Amen. So we may know how to better say and to better act out His goodness. If God is good, can we act from that goodness? If God is merciful, can we act on something out of His mercy? Amen? If God so blessed us, can we act out on something according to His blessing? If God is gracious to us, can, he act, can we act out on something according to His grace? Amen? You know why the grace of giving is called grace of giving? Someone asked me that, Pastor, bak- bakit ba ang giving, ang pagkakaloob na ginagawa natin no? when we come together as a church? Why do we call it the grace of giving? Because it is based on the grace of God. Right? Oh, yes. Ibig sabihin, we don't just give according to how we want to give. We want to give according to how He his grace flows through us. Amen. Correct? How do you pay your taxes? Do we pay our taxes according to how we simply want to compute our, the taxes? No. We pay our taxes proportionate to what we receive. Correct? You realize this? Can we not also give to God proportionate to the grace He bestows to us? Can we not also Respond proportionate to His goodness and grace. And now, here, anong sabi ni Peter? In verse 13 now. Go to verse 13. Wherefore? Sa mga katuwid, sa mga batanggay niyo, alalaun baga. Hindi ba? Ano pa, ano pa? Ha? Okay. Sa mga katuwid, ano raw? Ang sabi niya ay, geared up the loins of your mind. Now, what does that mean? Geared up the loins of your mind. You see, ang ating mind, ang ating kaisipan, mga kapatid, mga kapatid ay may set. May setting, I mean. Correct? Kaya ang tawag natin, mind set. Kung baga sa Tagalog, may pinaghuhugutan. Correct? Okay. Ano ang set? Ano ang setting ng ating mga kaisipan? Ang setting ng ating kaisipan ay isang ayon sa ating una kinalakihan. You agree? Our minds is so set according to our upbringing. Tama ba? Anong masarap sa iyo? Tuyo. Anong masarap sa Pilipino? Kanin. Okay? Kaya dahil kahit na ang kanin ay punong-puno ng sugar at kapag punong-puno ng kanin, unlimited rice ka mga kapatid, malapit ka na magka-diabetes. 
correct. Alam naman natin yun, di ba? Okay? At kahit na alam mo yan, na hey, ang kanin ay carbo yan. No? It, it results to your sugar in the blood. Right? Oh, sinamahan mo pa ng tinapay, sinamahan mo pa ng pansit, sinapahan mo pa ng bihon, sinamahan mo pa ng kung ano-ano, isama mo na yung spaghetti. Okay? Where can you find a people, okay, nagkanin na, anong ulam? Bihon. Anong ulam? Pansit. Mga kapatid, Pinoy lang ang gumagawa niyan. At lahat yan, mga kapatid, karbo. And they all turn to sugar. Right. And people tell us, hindi dapat ganon balansihin nyo. And all because we grew up into this, and this is our upbringing, we nevertheless do it every day, and we never get to learn. And then, iyak-iyak tayo, meron akong diabetes. Eh, yun ang kinakain mo eh. Tama. We. Oh. Pagkatapos. Okay? Kung biyernes, ano ang kinain niya? Munggo na may bagnet. Woo! Oh, di ba? Ano yung munggo? Uric acid. Ano yung bagnet? Cholesterol. Eh, bakit kanyo? Biyernes ngayon eh. <laughs> di ba? Ewan ko ba? Pagkatapos aangal tayo, masakit ang kasukasuan ko. Magpalit tayo ng pagkain. Talk what baboy naman. <laughs> okay. Masakit ang kasukasuan ko. Eh, alam nyo kasi, mindset yun eh. Correct? Pinoy ako eh. At kahit saan ka pumunta sa mundo, mga kapatid, the truth is this, yan ang hinahanap ng Pinoy. Pumunta ka sa Amerika. Okay. Matapos na, kumain lahat ng kinaka. Wow! Anong bottom line? Nung magkasama sa mga Pinoy, nalulungkot ako sa pagkain Pinoy. Right. Mindset eh. Anong sabi ni Peter? Geared up the low ends of your mind. Because of the goodness of God na hindi kapos. Araw-araw mga kapatid, ang binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon ay hindi lang karbo, spiritually speaking. Tama? Hindi lang uric acid. <laughs> Kundi balanse. Wherefore, ikay geared up the low ends of your mind, discipline your mind for the proper action. Correct? The goodness of God isn't a goodness that leads us to destruction. Right. God does not design His grace to flow to us in order to destroy us. Therefore, have our minds renewed. Amen? Have our minds renewed. Geared up. Ikay. Kaya nga eh, yung mindset, parang yung mga robe nung araw yan. Yun ang mindset eh. Kung ano yung nakagis ng behes. Anong sabi ni Peter? Geared up. Medyo ililist niya para you can be ready to go. Change your mindset. Rehab your mind. Be able to understand better the things of His Word. Hindi naman tayo lumaki isang ayon sa katuruan ng banal na kasulatan eh. Correct? But we nevertheless, because of this Word, learn about God. So therefore, change our mindset. Let our minds be according to this mind of Jesus Christ. Amen? Have His peace. He, and His peace passes all understanding, all mindsets. Amen? And the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, be ye renewed. Okay? Be changed. Be reconstructed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Number one, what's our response to the goodness of God? What's our response to the blessings from God? What's our response to the grace of God? Hey, change your mind. Discipline your mind. Think of something according to His goodness. 
not according to our mindsets. Iwanan na natin, mga kapatid, kung anong iniisip natin tuko sa mundong ito. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians 4.22 that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Number 2, verse 3. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3. After Peter says, Wherefore, get up the low ends of your mind. What, he, what does he say next? Be, ano raw? Be sober. Sober. What does be sober mean? Sobriety. Okay? Ano ba sa Tagalog yan? Ka, kahinahunan. Huminahun ka. Kung baga maghunos dili ka. Amen? Be sober. Alam niyo kung bakit? Ha? Kasi alam niyo po tayo, minsan pag kumain tayo, anong tawag niya sa Tagalog? Subasub ba yan? Ha? Ano? Masu Ay, masuba? Masi ano masiba? Masibang kuma. Nakakita na ba kayo ng ganon? Okay, kunyari pa ang sabi, alam mo, ang sarap mong kumain. Sa totoo lang ang sinasabi sa'yo, masiba kang kumain. Hoy, ang takaw mo. Tama? Alam nyo, sa totoo lang mga kapatid, ang mundong ito, puno ng taong ganyan. Correct? Ha? Kaya nga sinasabi natin, minsan ang Pinoy, hindi mo pwedeng pagkatiwalaan sa sobrang kalayaan. Kasi, ang sobrang kalayaan sumisira sa atin. Yung bang masiba ka sa sobrang kalayaan, pati yung kalayaan ng iba, inagaw mo. Tama. Alam nyo kung sa nakikita yan? Diyan sa EDSA. Totoo yun. Samantalang, you know, you have your right, you, ha you have your right in the lane you're in. Pero dahil masiba yung ibang driver, inaagaw yung lane mo. Oo nga, kung liliko, okay lang. Pero yung aagaw ng aagaw. You know what I'm saying? Mga kapatid, ang kahinahunan ay dapat mayroon tayo because hindi naman nauupos ang magandang kalooban ng Diyos. Para kang palagi inaagaw. At kapag ang utak natin ay palaging parang inaagawan, ang susunod dyan, alam niyo kung anong tawag? Insecure. Pag palaging akala mo ikay inaagawan, nai-insecure ka. At ang susunod sa insecure, paranoid. Are you looking at this? Ang susunod sa paranoid, alam niyo kung ano? Sira ang kukote. Mental ang susunod dyan. Na wala ka namang iniisip, pero you know, paranoid eh. Para bang palagi kang inaagawan, palagi kang, you know what I'm saying? Right? Kaya according to God's goodness, mag-apply tayo ng kahinahunan. Be sober. Ano ang kabaliktaran ng sober? Eh di lango, lasing. Ang lasing sa banal na kasulatan, mga kapatid, eh hindi lang yung lasing sa alkohol. Eh bakit ikaw na lasing? Sumobre, correct? At ang kalasingan ay hindi lang ina-apply sa liquor. Ina-apply yan sa lahat. Lasing sa kapangyarihan. Lasing sa success. Tama? Lasing sa pera. Lasing sa kung ano. Walang kahinahunan. Be sober. Kaya alam niyo po mga kapatid, ang pananampalatayang kristyano ay hindi para sa luko-luko. Sabi sa akin nung isa, alam mo Bishop, yung Bible nakakaloko po yan. Sabi ko, totoo? Oo. Eh baka luko-luko na bago nagbasa ng Bible. Yun ang totoo doon. Kasi God is not the author of confusion. God gives us right thinking. You remember, Yung, yung tinatawag na demoniac ng Gadara and the Lord healed him. E nung araw, nakatira si doon sa cementerio and 
he was, you know, he, he was just uh, uh, doing something sa kanyang katawan. And when, and when the Lord healed him, ano nangyari sa kanya? He became sober. Umayos siya. Nagdamit. At nung, magdag, nung magdamit siya, ba nagalit yung mga tao? Woo! Nagalit pa yung mga tao. Alam niyo minsan eh, kung sino yung matino na naging kristyano, ayaw ng tao. Tama? Anong gusto? Kasi yan, yan kasi ang kalakaran sa mundo. Correct. Okay. Number three. Number three. 1 Peter 1.13 So anong response ng una? Ha? Sa kabutihan? Sa magandang kalooban? Sa biyaya? Sa pag-ibig? At lahat ng tinatanggap natin mula sa Panginoon? Anong una? Ayusin natin ang ating mindset. Huwag ka na mag-isip ng mga bagay-bagay na mali. Amen? Ikalawa, have soberness. Have discipline. Amen? Have control. Be in full control of your actions. Have soberness. Number three, verse 13. Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. So what does this mean? According to God's grace and mercy and goodness and love and all things He bestows to us, Peter says, hey, patiently fix your hope. Patiently fix your hope. Put your hope on something concrete. Amen? Base your hope on the things which have eternal value. Correct? Kaya tayo mga mananampalataya, alam natin ang value ng eternal at ang value ng temporal. Hindi ko sinasabi, I'm not saying, na wag nating pagpahalagahan ang kabuhayan. Come on now, listen very carefully. I am not saying wag na kayo magtrabaho. I am not saying wag na kayo magbusiness. I am not saying wag na kayo mag-aral, wag na kayo magkaroon ng you know, pagtatapos, wag na kayo magkaroon ng degree, wag na kayo magkaroon ng you know, we need all these things. And I mean, I mean, let's excel. Correct. Kaya here in Lighthouse I say it. Kung estudyante ka, mag-aral ka. Kung mag-aral ka, kung mag, nag-aaral ka, mag tapos ka. Tama? At kung magtatapos ka, ha? Magtrabaho ka. Nagtapos ka na eh. Hindi ka nagtapos para maging bum. At kung ikay ay nagtatrabaho na, abay, masenso ka naman. Tama. Kasi nga tayo ay above the usual kind of people. And in all those things, ang pinaka-bottom line natin is this, that we fix our hope on the greater things far beyond this temporal life and let's add patience in it. Amen? Sapagkat yun yun eh. Kaya tayo mga mananampalatya mga kapatid, hindi po tayo nag-aabang lang sa success ng buhay na ito in terms of the temporal. Amen? No. We go beyond that. We go beyond that. And I say it, and even, mamaya may meeting ako sa mga, mga team natin ng media ministry because we're raising our media ministry. Kasama na dyan ng LoveNet, kasama na dyan ng ang, uh, uh, mga nasa camera, nasa editing, and all our television ministry, music ministry, because we want to raise it up into a media ministry under our ministry of leading and organizing. Why? Because, hey, because we value the more eternal things. We're not just putting this in order for us to have a television show. No. No. We're putting this because we build lives. 
we build lives that go beyond our lives. I posted something sa Facebook ngayon. And I said, may we as fathers be able to say what David says. Our fathers trusted in thee and were not confounded. Sana ang ating mga anak and even our children's children may say that of us. Number four. Number four. So una, mindset. Ikalawa, control sa ating mga sarili. Amen? Be sober. Ikatlo, ano nga yun? Fix our hope. Okay? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Number four. Verse 14 of our text. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in our ignorance. See, a true believer in Christ has knowledge because Christ is knowledge. Did you know that? Christ is wisdom. He has become to us our wisdom. Kaya, ang totoong na kay Kristo na alam ang kanyang kalooban sa kanyang salita is not living in ignorance. You hear me? Hindi tayo nabubuhay sang ayon sa walang kaalaman. Kung kaya nga inaalam natin ang kanyang kalooban. At ang kanyang kalooban, mga kapatid, ay maliwanag narito. Ang kanyang kalooban sumasaklaw sa lahat ng buhay natin. At ang banal na kasulatan ay mayroong katuruan sa lahat ng aspekto ng buhay natin. Kaysa ikay maliit pa, bata pa, o adult na, o single, o double, whatever. Amen? Oo. Oh. Sa pamilya, sa negosyo, sa komunidad, in governance, ang kalooban ng Panginoon naririto. Hindi na tayo kinakailangan magbilang pa ng petal ng bulaklak. Hindi tayo kinakailangan pumunta po sa ala pa. Ano ba mensahe sa akin ng Panginoon? No, it's here. It's here. Because our faith is knowledge. Christ is wisdom. Okay? And as Peter says, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. You know why we live like how we lived before without Christ? Because of our ignorance. Pero, mga kapatid, matapos tayo makaalam, abay, pakita natin na may alam na tayo. Tama ba? Kaya alam na naniniwala ako na ang taong na kay Kristo, alam ang kaayusan ng buhay. Amen. Alam ang kaayusan ng bawat desisyon. In fact, alam ang kaayusan ng mga relationships. Tama? Alam ang kaayusan kahit anong itsura. Correct. Hello? Yun yun eh. Ang taong na kay Kristo ay alam ang kaayusan ng buhay sapagkat si Kristo ang nagbibigay ng kaayusan. Tandaan natin yan. Hindi confused. Kung alam mong ikaw no, ay ganito, you know, ikay makasalanan, wala ka na doon eh. Bago nila lang ka na eh. Ang sabi na ba ng kasulatan, therefore, if anybody, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Hindi na tayo nakapagtitikisan at nag-friction pa kung ano tayo. Correct? You see, Having a double mind is not a nature of Christians. It's a nature of the world. And a double-minded man is so unstable in all his ways. You see? So we do not fashion ourselves according to this former lusts. And when you say former lusts, what does that mean? It refers to the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and all that would be in this world. Are you listening? Hindi lang tayo may kahinahunan, may kaayusan ng buhay at relationship at ng mga desisyon sa ating buhay. Number five. Number five. Are you still awake? Kayo mga nasa television, you're still there? Baka nilipat na yung channel. 
Oo. Anyway, verse 15. One more. One more that Peter says that should be within our response to the goodness of God. Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Magkaroon tayo ng kabanalan sa lahat ng buhay natin. Is this serious, Pastor? Yes. Not many pastors, not many ministries preach about this anymore. Ang kabanalan ng lahat ng nakay Kristo. Eh kasi po, Pastor, yun na po ang kalakaran ngayon eh. No, no, no. Still is the Word of God. Because as He which who called us is holy, so be ye holy. Hindi yung holing butas. Subalit, holy na banal. Nakikinig ba tayo? Meron ba tayo nun? Hindi lang mabait. Okay? Hindi lang yung, well, you know, philanthropist ako, wala namang kabanalan. And all these things. At alam nyo, ang banal na kasulatan ay hindi nagkukulang sa dapat nating malaman sa kabanalan. Because Peter says, in 2 Peter 1.3, According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I say it to everyone today. How do we respond to the goodness of God? Would we say, Lord, give me all these five? Mindset. Soberness. Control. Value ng things concerning my hope in a holy life. Let's stand and pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for how your word speaks clearly to us. This is not simply a reminder. This is your truth. And your truth should be in our hearts. Your truth should be in our lives. Your truth should be in all our actions. And for us, Lord, people of Lighthouse, you've saved us. You've cleansed us. We know for sure that we're saved. But Father, do we have that response, that proper response according to your goodness to us, according to your grace, according to your love, according to your mercies. Oh, Father, sana po, Panginoon, sa pagkakaunawa namin ng mensaheng ito'y lumapit kami sa iyo at sabihin po namin, Panginoon, hindi kami consistent sa dapat po namin ikinikilos. Dapat namin ibinubuhay. Nabubuhay kami sang ayon sa gusto lang po namin, hindi po sang ayon sa kung paano kami dapat sumusukli sa iyong biyaya, sa iyong kahabagan, sa iyong kabutihan, sa iyong salita. Patawarin mo kami, Panginoon. At sa invitation hour na ito, Panginoon, lalapit po kami. Dudulog kami sa iyo. At magsasabi po kami, Panginoon, itama niyo ang aming buhay. Patawarin niyo kami. Nais kami namin magsimula muli, muli Panginoon. Bigyan niyo kami ng panibagong simulain. At para naman sa mga nari dito na wala pa kay Kristo, nawa Panginoon, ay lubos na lang makita o Diyos ang iyong kabutihan, ang iyong biyaya, ang iyong pag-ibig, ang iyong kahabagan na sukat na nagbibigay sa lahat, Panginoon, ang pagkakataon lumapit upang tumanggap kay Kristo bilang tagapagligtas at Panginoon. At magkamit ng buhay na walang hanggan at kapatawaran at mabuhay para sa iyo. O Panginoon, Make us to respond and that properly, Panginoon, sa lahat ng iyong pakikipag-usap sa amin. And as every head is bowed, every eye is closed.
children born and old. And even now, and even while we sleep, there is a grace so Jesus ran before us. He bore our burdens for us. We can let go and lay it down. And even now, and even Thank you for having joined us today in this episode of The Pulpit, where we feature the services of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, and you have not had the experience of God's saving grace, I invite you, let Jesus Christ come into your heart. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you now into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that prayer, is the faith in your heart 
that the Lord Jesus Christ is in you as your Lord and Savior. God bless you today. Join us again next week for another edition of The Pulpit.